In the never-ending mantra of COVID and climate change, there is an established narrative you're never permitted to question. If you do, you'll find yourself labeled a spreader of dangerous misinformation. Guess what? The truth does come out. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. And welcome to a brand new week of Truth to Ponder and what a week I expect this one to be. Today, I have a regular guest you haven't heard in a while coming on the program. We're going to share some time together. Uh, The Reverend Dr. Timothy Gales, many of you have asked, where is he? Well, he'll be he'll be on the program in in just a, a little bit. I've been looking at a lot of news stories of late and and I've been kind of surprised that much of what we said on this program for the past two years has proven itself to be true, even even when I would be, well, canceled in certain places. When we first began the program two years ago, I actually had a Twitter account for for Truth to Ponder to put out information about the latest program. But Twitter kept deleting my tweets and demanding that I, I get rid of them because I'm spreading false information, dangerous information about COVID-19 or anything else. When we got into December of 2020, when I would challenge some of what I saw with the election, no, it was the fairest and the most perfect election in the history of the United States. And Biden won with this record vote. You don't challenge the narrative. So we're not allowed to challenge the COVID narrative at all. Everything Dr. Fauci said is gospel truth. Everything that Dr. Burke said, everything that Rochelle Walensky said, and the list goes on and on and on, and all the governors that locked you into your homes and reprobate leaders worldwide. It made you lose your job, your income, and some people lost their homes, their livelihood, their businesses. But they didn't care. We're gonna cure, we're gonna, we're gonna conquer COVID. We said on this program two years ago, COVID was not a natural occurring virus in the way that we saw it with SARS-CoV-2. They said it came from, oh, I don't know, maybe a monkey or some other animal eh, eh, somewhere somewhere in China. And it got to a, a meat market. And then from there it spread. Well, that's turned out to be just a fantasy land story. It's not true. They now begrudgingly admit it may have come from a lab. But when I said it, I was deemed a spreader of lies and misinformation. And Twitter kept canceling what I would say. Facebook did the same thing. I just got where I didn't say as much in social media. Why waste your time? They want an echo chamber at uh, at Meta, which is now known as Facebook, They want everybody to believe and do the same thing and live in their little universe. Things we said about climate change being literally a a false religion. And if you try to share any easily confirmed bona fide facts with these people, they, they just scream at you. Climate denier! You know, you might as well be, you know, burned at the stake for being a witch to go against the climate narrative. Here in the United States, we're about to spend $700 million, billion dollars, I take that back, heading toward a trillion dollars for a climate change bill they called an Inflation Reduction Act, which is just a lie. It's all a lie. And they keep lying to you and lying to you and lying to you. And some people are so misinformed they keep voting these reprobates back into office there are a lot of fake conservatives out there Mitt Romney comes to mind phony as phony can be Mitch McConnell I think he'd rather be the minority leader he's he doesn't have the gumption he doesn't have I think he's too compromised I think he needs to go I think if he had any decency in him He would resign the Senate. But the man is not decent. The man is a swamp creature and a liar. And poor Joe Manchin, West Virginia. 
They told him that they would get him a natural gas pipeline to make the people in West Virginia love their senator. And now that he signed off on the deal and this pathetic, dangerous bill has been signed that I guarantee is going to cost you money and freedom. It's going to cost you both. There's no debating it. All the radicals in the House say, nope, we're not going to support that. So, uh, Joe Manchin, you got snookered. And they knew they were going to snooker you. They knew you were a weak-minded individual and you'd cave. For, you know, just like your prede- one of your predecessors from West Virginia. You know, bringing home the bacon. Remember him? Robert Byrd. Democrat. Just kept bringing home the bacon and giving his vote up for any big thing, any super liberal thing, any super whatever thing, demanded. And then we had climate change, and I I, I got banished from, almost got banished from Facebook for saying, I've been hearing we only have 10 years left for the last 50 years. They called that dangerous information. How about that? But it's true. We, We have so many stories that we shared on this program over the past year and two years. And even though at the time it went against the narrative, you know, even even the United Nations recruited over 100,000 what they called digital first responders to push the establishment narrative to combat misinformation, which was actually true. And during that time, the Reverend Dr. Timothy Gales and I used to talk about all this stuff. And as we look at our batting average today, Dr. Gales, how is our batting average, let's say, compared to, oh, I don't know, the CDC? <laughs> oh, we're batting 100. I mean, they they were lying from the beginning. We now see that in retrospect, right? But the fact of the matter is we read the papers. We read what this was. It was an emergency youth authorization. It was an mRNA um, genetic modification shot. It was not a vaccine to begin with. Mm -hmm. All of the problems that come with that and everything that was warned against in in different scientific journal articles. That's right. And we're not not talking. And once again, I've had some people say, well, you know, some of those doctors you talk about, this is like a year ago. Well, you know, Wikipedia calls them quacks. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Wikipedia can be Wik- called quacks with Wik- some of the stuff that they do. Oh, and, I know. And they're they're so it. biased. I mean, they're, they're, they they have gone the way of fascist book and, you know, Twitter. You know, in course. other words, they're, they're just nothing but propaganda pieces. Yes. Uh, look, ultimately, the facts and what we said are bearing out. Truth will always come out. Um, if we were the quacks back then, we're not now. We mm-hmm. talked about, you know, HIV one and two and three being spliced into this shot, into mm-hmm. these things. And then all of a sudden, a year and a half later, oh, no, people are coming down with what they call VADES now. Um, vaccine AIDS, immunodeficiency. Really? No yeah. kidding. Um, hey, these are things that we were saying yeah. that were in there. You know, I, I saw you, you're going to love this one. It was a year ago coming up this week. If you, I mean, I think it's tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. It was a year ago on Tuesday, what, which is tomorrow, but on the 23rd, that the CD with the FDA had their big bogus press conference. And if you remember that conference, you know they had everybody all smiley and happy. And the, and I remember logging in, and I was able to get in barely uh, before they ran out of quote press seats. And, and I was on their online uh, press conference for the release of Comirnaty or whatever they want to call it, the so-called yep. licensed version of the Pfizer vaccine. Right. And, and, I, and I remember everybody saying, well, you can, you can shut up now. The, the vaccine's been approved by the FDA. They've, they've done all the testing they need to do. I mean, I actually had people telling me that, you know, that to shut up because it's now approved. And I said, mm-hmm. okay. So you just got your, so you you have the approved vaccine. One guy said, yes, I went and got Pfizer last week, and I know it's the approved one. I said, did it say, did, what did you sign? I don't know. Right. Right. Well, I, I just saw a story. You may have not seen this one yet, and but I ran across it. Believe it or not, you can now get, uh, co- what is that, the Covax or whatever the name is, uh, yes. uh, Spikevax yep. or whatever that is for mm-hmm. 
uh, Moderna, and then uh, Comirnaty or whatever they want to call it. Com- mm-hmm. Nobody Com- can Com- pronounce yep. Comirnaty. Everybody yep. pronounces it differently. You, you, it, it's now been available in the United States, but but how many doses do you think that we actually have available of those two now approved uh, versions from the FDA? How many are 35,000 doses total? And it's only for military. Right. And that is basically, if you hadn't figured it out, a lot of military are filing lawsuits saying the law says you cannot force us to take an experimental vaccine for the military. It's in our contract when we sign up. And so what what they've done is for the last holdouts, okay, we'll give you spike vax or whatever they want to call it. We'll give you comorbidity or whatever they want to call it. You you right. can have that now. Because it's, it's such it's a It's like a witch's brew, right? Yeah, you know, with the millions of other doses, brew. it's it, it's statistically immaterial. Mm-hmm. And even if you do die of some kind of vaccine related injury, well, we've never seen any vaccine injuries yet. I mean, they really don't exist. <laughs> Right. I mean, or they're so rare. I know. They're, they're so rare that you've got millions of people, millions right now, who are damaged irreparably by these. The but, CDC said that doesn't stay in your body long. These have been rigorously tested, right, in a couple of months, rigorously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but we now know it not only stays in your body, which is what you and I said two years ago, it goes everywhere. That's and right. it goes, it passes the blood brain barrier, the nanotechnology that's in there. That is affirmed. The graphene oxide, that is affirmed. All of these things are affirmed. You've got, you've got biosensors, which are in there. Frequency, they, they, they actually move to frequency, right? So, and so does graphene oxide. So why, why do we have that in there? Why do we have gain of function and why was that used denied by Fauci, but now proven mm-hmm. gain of function happened? OK, denied it could ever change your DNA. Now, studies have come out, peer reviewed journal articles saying, oh, my gosh, it actually can change your DNA. No kidding. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, and they're trying to look years ago. Let, let's go back to one of the earliest things that was said, you know, where it it never leaves the injection site. Right. That was the first thing they said. Yeah. Not to worry. It never leaves the injection site. The <laughs> you know your your body's blood system will notice that this spike protein is there and it'll deal with it accordingly and start creating antigens. Right. Okay. Antigens right. to what? And that was one of the first questions I asked. Antigens to what? That's right. That's right. And, you're 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 looking at such a vast amount of either stupidity in the so-called evidence-based science world or purposeful, purposeful delusion and destruction of the human being. And I don't know how to bring it any other way. I'll give you a third option that that entails what you just said, but it'll mm-hmm. go one step further. I think there is a tiny group that has been trying to use anything for control, for power, for population reduction. These are Gaia, you know, earth worshiping, Moloch worshiping pagans, even though they'll claim like, uh, you know, Yaval Noah Harari that I'm an atheist. I mean, what they're doing is they're doing demonic deeds. So yeah, you, you've got a small little group. And then you've got big pharma on the other hand, that'll do anything for money. And they won't, and they have no conscience, even when they, look, Pfizer, we know for a fact over the years with the billions with a B they have paid in fines for fraud, Mm -hmm. they have no conscience. Money is their only object. And Moderna never had a product go to market until the COVID-19 vaccine, because they were on the verge of total and absolute bankruptcy in 2019 they came on the stock market in 2011 with these promises that this new mrna technology will cure everything from cancer to male pattern baldness literally we can reprogram the body this is software to upload to change things that are wrong and they kept saying and we'll have a product on the market in a year well maybe a year and a half 
Well, right. maybe in two years, but keep getting us more money. And so they build these beautiful headquarters. They have these marvelous websites. They've got all this PR. They've got mm-hmm. all these, yet they're... Their scientists and researchers are a revolving door because these people realize it's going nowhere. So you've got the CDC, the FDA, the NIAID, the NIH, right? All you get paid all for groups. by who? <laughs> yes, yes. It all ain't. You know, for- it's it's not the it's not the taxpayers. They're being paid by the fees that are coming in from Moderna and Pfizer and sure. GlaxoSmithKline and and every other group out there that are that they regulate. They're being so these paid are off. supposedly, according to Gates, the gold standard, right? And yet they lied to us about their roles in the origins of SARS-CoV-2. They conjured up and already had waiting, actually, this dangerous genetic treatment masquerading as a vaccine. They faked the safety trials to rush them into use. Mm -hmm. They denied people proper and effective treatments, you know, inexpensive drugs that were out there. That worked. And they they killed them with ventilators and remdesivir. And and they did this solely to maintain a fraudulent emergency youth authorization. Why? Because it shielded the vaccine companies from lawsuits. And once these vaccines were widely distributed and forced upon people with mandates, they hid the information about all the adverse reactions and deaths. And we said, I, I said, to hey, you, I'm, I'm going to give you I'm going to give time. let me give you a really good example, because if I don't mm-hmm. do it now, I'm going to forget. When it came to how it uh, impacted pregnancy, you ready for this one? And I I just Mm -hmm. happened to read an analysis done by somebody that knows a lot more than you and I when it comes to reading the data. That, you know, they would talk about an adverse effect that self-corrected, you know, during the trial. Right. You ready for what a self-correcting adverse effect is so it it should be ignored? A terminated pregnancy from the vaccine. It was, yeah. in other so, words, uh, it, it, well, see, well, yeah, the person went into labor and 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 had a stillborn born child, uh, but see, that's self correcting. It's no longer an issue at the end of the right. trial. Right. So you get AIDS and all these other things, but you know what? That's just saying that the vaccine works. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is the this is the idiocy and the absolute propagandized mind bending that we are seeing today. One hand, CDC is still saying they're safe and effective. On the other hand, they're admitting the fact that they're not safe and effective. This is double speak. We heard this in a book called 1984, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, New speak. Right. Yeah, absolutely. People get confused and and they don't know what to believe. So they, by default, fall back on the highly respected gold standard institutions. And that's what they're doing. They're they're saying, hey, Mm -hmm. then you've got the cognitive dissonance group, which I hate to say are the ones who already bought into the narrative and took the shots. Mm -hmm. They certainly don't want to think they're going to die from them. Of course, they don't want to think that the fact that their their arms rotten off their body or they have all these, uh, you know, other ailments. That but they from came the from something else. Uh, you know, in their no. mind, they can't be the vaccine. It's something else. Listen, well, they just said an article just came out blaming. Get this. I think it was on Zero Hedge blaming the the lockdowns in England for the effects that people are dying over a thousand people a week in England right now from non COVID-19 illness. And they're saying, well, this might, this not the shot. They're not going to say it can't be the shot. What they're going to say is it must be the lockdowns that are now killing a thousand people a week. Mm -hmm. You know, back in 1981 or 91, I can't remember Jacques Cousteau, you remember Jacques? Oh yeah, absolutely. He said, he said this. Okay, he had a, he had a quote about the world. He was very upset about um, how many people are in the world, and you know Jacques Cousteau was a big a big wig, all right, a big wig out there in the in the world and so forth. So he especially says underwater, I'm gonna, especially I'm the underwater water quote. world. I'm going to read you a quote from what he said. Okay. And cause this is this, people don't understand this. Jacques Cousteau, Cousteau said in UNESCO courier, November, 1991 edition quote, the United nations goal is to reduce population selectively by encouraging abortion, forced sterilization and control of human reproduction and regards two thirds of the human population as excess baggage with 
350,000 people to be eliminated per day. Then he says, it's terrible to have to say this. World population must be stabilized. And to do that, we must eliminate 350,000 people per day. This is so horrible to contemplate that we should even say it. Again, UNESCO Courier, that was from the November 1994 edition. Uh, So you can go read these. So right now, you're talking 1,000 people a week are dropping in in England. That plus more here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and across the world where these shots have gone. Remember, there are hundreds of countries around the world. Around the world, you're looking at hundreds of thousands a week. I mean, and maybe even more. Maybe it's adding up because we said people were going to start start dying from these shots in in mass. Now, that's not everyone at once. That's right. Remember, this has a lentivirus in it, which we t- talked about. Right. It's a delayed reaction. And and let's make it really clear. I mean, there are some people out there. I will not name them. That's not what I need to do. I don't want to get into some little battle with them. But there were some people that were saying way back in early 2021, a year and a half ago, when mm-hmm. these vaccines first came out, that we would wipe out 80% of the population by the end of the year or 50% by the end of the year. Mm-hmm. And, and I doubted that because my my theory at the time and my strong prayerful, and I say that emphatically, prayerful response to, was, no, it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. Because if it did, would they be forced to shut off the program on day uh, within 30 days? I mean, they need need plausible deniability. They they need time. I mean, if you start, you know, if all of a sudden a million people die in the first two months, you know, and we didn't even get to that with COVID allegedly. Right. And and go ahead. So the witches brew, you know, that's why they put in all of the African green monkey. That's why they put in the AIDS splices. Look, all of these things are in there causing everything from from heart, from myocarditis to heart attacks to to cancers to you name it. Right. People sudden death, adult yep. death syndrome. So we've got all these things. And that's something that new. We've never it. had this before. Well, because there's a multiplicity of things happening, nobody can directly tie it to the shot because people die from different things. But the number of people dying, the commonality of these different things and the time span beginning when the shots started being rolled out that are now happening, you you got to be blind to not see this as the ideology of of the deaths and sudden a death adult death syndrome come on now they're saying you know you can get a heart attack if you jog you can get a heart attack if you garden you can get a heart attack if you sit and breathe the air Mm -hmm. you can get a heart attack you know they're they're coming up with excuses well yeah well when you look at the number of people in europe in particular where you know they there's a little bit more knowledge getting out how many how many athletes are dying suddenly Oh, and, and by the way, argument. by the way, if you if you even try to use the term on Facebook now, died suddenly, they they will censor your your post. You're, you're, you're passing horrible and evil and dangerous information. I've been warned on that. You I'm don't even sure. say, you know, died suddenly. Oh, yeah. no, 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 no. You can't say that. So right. that tells me that the powers that be understand that these vaccines are causing it, yet they're still doubling down wanting people to take it and i i think of people that my wife and i know mm-hmm. that that are that have taken the vaccine that are having health effects yet they still demand that we take it otherwise we're going to die of covid i know i mean it's like would you I get know. a would, would, can you not connect the dots that's right that's right so you know we're looking at such incredible you know look we're not prophets mm-hmm. we were reading the paperwork reading their own writings looking at what they're saying when most people weren't they're just listening and during the press conference a year ago uh, Mm -hmm. on the 23rd of august i i noticed they kept referring to a letter that had been sent to uh basically biontech which is the affiliate of pfizer um and and it talked about this letter and in all the material that they had for the press to gloat over and share excitedly that we have a, an approved vaccine right that one letter was mysteriously never able to be found 
until I spent hours digging through their archives where nothing is properly numbered. They have a system you can't get to that indexes. And Mm -hmm. I just happened to get lucky and found it. Wow. Did you find Hillary's emails too? Well, no, but what, 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 (laughs) but see if, if anybody in the press, which is nothing more than a mouthpiece, CNN, MSNBC, you know, they're just a paid mouthpiece. And, and I remember being in that press conference because I was, it was online. And like I say, I, I don't know how I got in and snuck in, but I did. And, and then that when when somebody wanted to ask a question, it was thank you for being here. Bye bye. We have to go now. Bye bye. Look at the material. Right. Bye bye. Click, and they were gone. And no, and the, and there was only like two questions allowed, and you knew they were the scripted questions, the ones they wanted to be asked. They were so it was so blatant. It was such a lie. It was so outrageous. That they, you know, that this was a staged, phony press conference to bait and switch and make people believe that the Pfizer vaccine and then shortly thereafter, the Moderna were now FDA approved and people line up to go to Walmart and Walgreens and wherever and they're willingly like sheep going to the slaughter. And they Which think exactly what Jacques Attelier said would happen. He said in his brief history of the future, he turned around and he said, listen, he was the um, advisor to uh, Francois Mitterrand in France. And he said they will be they will line up when we offer a medicine to deal with the pathogen or a plague. He said it will be like they will go line up for their own slaughter to be euthanized and they won't even know it. I mean, that's as evil as it comes, but they don't see it as evil. They see it as saving planet Earth Um, because these people have a philosophy. These rich people, the Gateses of the world and Soros, and they have a philosophy and it's called Luciferianism. And if you look at that, it is a philosophy. It is a nefarious one, ultimately, but they don't believe that. They believe that it is a good one because they're going to be the, the ones who direct evolution right do you, do you remember barbara marx hubbard not off the top of my head i probably should but i don't former democratic vice presidential candidate she also was um an advisor to the u.s department of defense believe it or not okay now i uh, make the connection when you said that yep. and and the u.n she worked for right so in 1980 she said this and this you know this this ought to tell you something because these people Mm -hmm. all know each other i I call it the the psychopaths or the narcopaths they're narcissists and psychopaths but she said quote out of the full spectrum of human personality one-fourth is elected to transcend one-fourth is resistant to election they are unattracted by life ever evolving. Now, as we approach the quantum shift from create creature human to co-creative human, the destructive one fourth must be eliminated from the social body. Fortunately, you, dearly beloveds, are not responsible for this act. We are. We are in charge of God's selection process for planet Earth. He selects, we destroy. We are the riders of the pale horse death. And my guest today is the Reverend Dr. Timothy Gale. So great to have him back on the program again. And after we have our little break coming up here, we're going to continue our conversation here on Truth to Ponder. For those that wondered, whatever happened to Dr. Gales? Well, I've been in the middle of moving and he has another career and he has ministry work that he does. So trying to arrange a time when we both can be in front of a microphone you know, he's in a different state than I am, and we're having to coordinate this. And, you know, with the miracle of electronics, we're able to connect with each other and do this program. And I hope that you enjoy the time that I get to spend with some great guests. A matter of fact, this week, if everything works out as planned, there's going to be a couple of other guests that I think you're going to be glad to hear that have a lot to share. Today's program, yeah, I hate to admit that it is a victory lap, more more or less. Uh, I titled this episode, We Told You So. And how many times did I, did I get emails or hate mail, you know, when I would talk about climate change and talk about how all these great predictions made in the 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, and early 2000s that should have happened by now, all have failed to materialize. 
I shared that with somebody on Facebook. I said, you know, I've been hearing, oh, I don't know, we only have 10 years left for over 50 years. And every major prediction has never come true. That should have happened by now. Well, guess what? Facebook calls that dangerous information. And they've restricted my personal Facebook account. And guess what? I don't care. I really don't care. I don't want to participate in the metaverse echo chamber of literally liberal and leftist insanity. I'll go there. But I I don't worry about it. I am not dependent upon Facebook for much of anything, to be frank and honest. I want to expose the lies. And I've never seen so many lies from so many so-called government agencies. There is no doubt that here in the United States, and I know the same is true in Canada, Australia, United Kingdom, New Zealand, the entire Western world. You have puppet governments and they have puppet politicians that are run by the globalist and the globalist corporations. There's no doubt about it. I mean, I'm not telling you something you don't know. Big Pharma makes a lot of big noise and throws around a lot of big money to get what they want. They own the CDC. They, you don't, the CDC is not even a legit organization anymore. So I never worry about them much and what they have to say. The FDA, I call them the Federal Death Administration. We'll come back with Dr. Gales in a moment, but right now, I really need to remind you, we need your support more now than ever if you believe in this radio program. If you do, would you consider writing a check payable to Ancient Word Radio? Ancient Word Radio. The mailing address, Truth to Ponder, 5753, Highway 85 North, number 3248. That's 5753, Highway 85 North, number 3248, the city is Crestview, one word, Crestview, Florida, 32536, Crestview, Florida, 32536. And we'll be right back after this break. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Beerman. The encouragement of weakness coming up. Shalom Aleichem. This is the nice Jewish boy, Jonathan Kahn, your Jewish connection, bringing you the riches of your Jewish roots in Jesus. Now get your pen out as fast as you can so you don't miss out on receiving a special free gift you're going to get and love in a moment. Now, you deal with sin. All believers do. And it can be discouraging. It gets you down. You know, well, I want to show you something. In Hebrews, it says that we have a high priest who sympathizes with our weakness, our weaknesses. This is Messiah. Now, the word in Greek is asthenia for weakness. It means really a weakness. Now, it might sound like there's an excusing of sin when we talk about sin as a weakness. There's no excuse for sin. There's only blood for sin, the blood of Messiah. So why call it weakness? Well, for somebody who practices sin, then sin is not a weakness. It's their life. But for God's people, if you're sincerely following him, you're you're seeking him then your sin is a weakness. It's not the direction of your life. The direction of your life is righteousness. The sin is weakness. It doesn't represent your life or your direction. It represents the weakness which goes away from your direction. So for you who love the Lord, the sin is not your life. It's not your identity. And God doesn't see it as such. Neither is it your course. You've got a high priest who knows your weaknesses and can sympathize all the more. Make it your aim to give him less to have to sympathize with. That which is not consistent with your goal, the purpose, the aim of your life. Make it your aim to rid your life of all these weaknesses. Because a weakness does not identify what your life is, but what your life is not. And what it will be free of in the power of Messiah. Well, more ask for the mega priest on CD. Now the free gift for you. The mystery of the temple doors and sapphires with the riches of your Jewish roots and Jesus special teachings, updates on Israel, world events and prophecy and the secrets of strength and victory for every day of your life. So how do you get these gifts free? Easy. Just remember Jesus' real Hebrew name, Yeshua and you dial it. That's it. So just call 1-800-YESHUA-1. You will be blessed but call now 1-800-YESHUA-1. I invite you to join me in bringing salvation back to God's ancient people, Israel, and all the unreached peoples in five continents, over a billion people. It's the most amazing way, the farthest way you can ever spread the gospel through shortwave radio. It's amazing. Just call 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's Y-E-S-H-U-A-1. Or you can write me direct. Here's how. Just write to the nice Jewish boy box, 1111 Lodi, L-O-D-I, New Jersey, 
07644. It's a nice Jewish boy box, 1111, Lodi, L-O-D-I, New Jersey, 07644. Well, till next time, this is Jonathan Kahn saying, be strong, my friend. Shalom and Achem. You've got a high priest who can sympathize. Peace be to you in Messiah. Or Haolam, the light of the world. is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. And welcome back to part two of Truth to Ponder. And I'm your host, Bob Bierman. It's a Monday. And and once again, as I mentioned as we went into the break, how much I appreciate all of you that contact this program, all of you that have supported this program. Here we are going into our third year of doing it. And I, I can't believe that when this started as a humble little effort, uh, I didn't know how long it was going to survive. I was talking to a good friend of mine in Florida, and he said, you know, Bob, you need to do something. And, and I said, well, I have this idea for for a podcast and a radio program, but, you know, to get it on the radio is not going to be free. And he, he said, I'll tell you what, I'll write you a check right now and give it a shot. And this would be enough to cover about two, two and a half months of airtime that I was looking at. And, if it, and I, I figured it this way. If God was behind it, the program would continue moving forward. If, he, if, if God was not in it, it would come to a dramatic end. And, and at that time, we were, I was talking about two primary things. And, and the first was all of this stuff going on with the pandemic. There were too many things that didn't add up. I saw it in my work in emergency management. The vaccines had not yet arrived. And the other thing that was basically on our minds was the 2020 election and all these conservatives and Republicans saying, hey, man, we got it in the bag. Trump's a shoe in for re-election. And, and I kept warning, don't count on it. I have this deep feeling inside. Don't trust what you think you see because it could be very easily taken from you. Besides, by the way, this year will be the 50th year I have voted. I've been voting for 50 years. It's not fixed yet. It's, it's if anything, it's a whole lot worse. And then so between the pandemic and the election, and you just felt that there was something going on that was pure evil. Now, my guest today, the Reverend Dr. Timothy Gales. And it's been a while since we've had the opportunity to be on the radio together. And I have a funny feeling this program could go into tomorrow. So, Dr. Gales, I want to welcome you back. And... Remind us what we were talking about as we went into the break. We were we were reading some quotes from um, elitists and advisors. Barbara Marks Hubbard, I read before the break. She, of course, was a Democratic vice presidential candidate. And she she was an occultist, believe it or not. Um, nothing new there, right? And no. she was also an advisor to hey, the U.S. Hey, Department of Defense. The top levels of the Third Reich were occultists. That's right. People forget right. that. I see that. Um, so she was also an advisor to the U.S. Department of Defense. And, you know, in a nutshell, she basically said, we are the riders of the pale horse, death. We will do the depopulation. So this is in 1980 in a book called Co-Creation, which she uh, self-published and through the UN. Now, I quoted Jacques Cousteau. I could quote Ted Turner from Audubon magazine in his interview in 1996. He said a total population of 250 to 300 million people, a 95 percent decline from present levels mm-hmm. would be ideal. Deal. Stop so and think. Is- I'm glad you mentioned Ted Turner. Yeah. Um, let's go look at the now defunct Georgia Guidestones. You know, yep. I, look, I don't, I don't believe that anybody should take it upon themselves to destroy something. It's not your. It's not the way we do business in right. in, the, in, in in our Lord's world. We just don't do that. But those Guidestones magically appeared from somebody that called himself, I think his name was like Paul Christian or something like that. It was just Mm -hmm. a made-up name. And he went to, I mean, I've been to Elberton many a time. And I, matter of fact, knew a guy in the funeral business that used to get all of his granite 
Elberton is the granite capital of the world. People don't know that. Many many of the monuments you have in cemeteries across the United States and especially the East Coast, all the way up into New York, down into Florida, come from Elberton. And they make some of the largest pieces you've ever seen. And so this guy goes to this company in Elberton and wants these four massive pillars with a with a capstone on top uh, to talk about in multiple languages, in essence, the Ten Commandments to save the earth. And one right. of them is to keep a sustainable population of no more than 500 million. This has been going on uh, since the 90s. This was built, what, in the 80s? I mean, think mm-hmm. about it. This guy came up from nowhere, paid cash, right. and then bought the land. And then after yep. it was all done, you know, he gave it to the county with money to maintain it. And there they are, the Georgia Guidestones. Some of the most yep. scariest mm-hmm. evil predictions and prophecies you've ever seen. Mm. Absolutely. 300 million would be the perpetual balance with nature of human beings. Mm-hmm. But, but see, they're doing more than that. They're not only reducing population, they're changing humanity, transhumanizing mm-hmm. Absolutely. So the DNA is being changed. They're putting stuff in here like insect DNA and things like that, which which are becoming a part of human. So understand you've got not only nanotechnology in there, but you've also got other species, cross species or what we'd call chimera. Um, and, and I talked about the chimera mRNA. So – it's all a witch's brew, and I, I actually like that statement about it because it is a witch's brew. Yes, it is. So that it, so with plausible di- deniability, they can see people dropping dead of a multiplicity of different illnesses. You can't pin it on the shot, um, you know, and and some just dying right away. There was a gentleman who just had a, a wedding eight months ago. Yeah. Uh, and he just came out and said, you know, half of the people there, half, they're mostly Republicans. He was a conservative talk show host. Um, I'm forgetting his name now. I, I, to, it'll hit me in a second. I know who you're talking yep. about. And he said, you know, half of the people got the vaccine and half didn't. The half that did eight and a half months ago, the half that got the vaccine, he said, out of them, 33 of them are sick with all sorts of various illnesses, mm-hmm. and seven of them have died That's outright. Correct. Yeah, I couldn't Whereas remember. With se- the I other couldn't half re- that was unvaccinated, nothing, no deaths, no illnesses. Exactly, exactly. And you know, it, it once again it goes back to look. And we were talking about this before we started putting the program together today. You know, Joe Biden said so clearly last year. I think it was in April or May. I'll look for the audio cut, and and I may get a chance to play it in a, maybe tomorrow. But, you know, when he said, hey, if you take the vaccine, if you take the vaccine and you get your second dose, then you can take off your face mask because you're no longer a spreader of COVID-19. On top of that, you won't get it and you won't die. Remember right. that? Mm-hmm. So he now promised. No he, he promised. He promised it. You could take off your mask. You'll be COVID proof. And yeah. how many millions of people in the United States that are not able to think for themselves? They are nothing more than drones because mm-hmm. of our public school system that has taught people not to be critical thinkers. Just accept what authority tells you, and accept the money they give you, and the jobs they give you, and all the good stuff they give you, and just believe in what they tell you. They're your god. By the way, that when you look look at it government has become a god of course and, so and they there. want it they want to yeah. be that and politics and remember lloyd austin you know the mm-hmm. head of the department of defense i mean here's a big guy and he's walking down a line of troops wearing his face mask and his face shield he looked yeah. like darth vader checking out the troops in star wars <laughs> right and, and the worst part was well, with all that, he knew he'd be COVID proof because he's quadruple vaccinated, I think. I, or is, he's either on his fifth shot, I believe. Yeah, fifth right. shot in his case. I'm almost positive. I may be wrong, but one of these people that now have COVID are on their fifth shot. Yeah, a lot of people are getting their look. They've gotten their first and now second boosters. So it's four shots. Mm-hmm. This is still within the time frame of what a year and a half. Yeah. I yeah. mean. 
you're talking four shots. Now, you you remember getting four polio shots, right? Sure, yeah, every time. Right. Now, you I, know, I, if the first three... And first then, we got two, our, then we got our sugar cube every year thereafter. Yes. I mean, if, the, if you got four shots and you come down with the worst case of COVID you've ever come down with, why would you get the fifth? Because you, you don't know, want to they, get it again. <laughs> I mean, they, they keep telling you it, it'll be good for up to what? Three months? And now we're with, and, and and by the way, if you really and I'm trying to remember the name of the doctor that tore apart the numbers from the study for those that are young children, it's really bad when European countries figure out, you know, this is not a good idea to give to kids. And you have right. country by country are saying, uh, this is a bad idea, folks. And yep. they're and they're not doing it anymore. Why? Because well, the effect the the efficacy lasts about two to three weeks. Yeah. And then so, nothing but damage beyond that point. Yeah. So you've got the Netherlands who forbids it for under 18. Mm -hmm. And you've got Canada who just approved five to 11 year olds receiving it. Yeah. And and, and tr if, Tr Trudeau, if Trudeau gets his way, they'll be doing it in utero. That's right. I mean, That's before right. the child is born, we have to vaccinate him because he may come out a carrier. I mean, and, and put a face diaper on him, too, just in case when he's born, he doesn't infect you. I mean, they're looking yep. at the human body and people around you as nothing but what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they're looking. Animals. Well, you know, as as well, someone that could threaten your life with COVID. Yeah. You know, look, look at. Oh, yeah. Look we're, at all this. Remember the silliness that started in 2020. And this was my last straw mm -hmm. with emergency management because I kept my job at the time was primarily in the area of public information, though I also was deeply involved with planning. And right. so in the county that I served, I had a budget of $8 million to get ready for the wave of COVID. And I was told in this county that 3,000 people would be dead by the summer or sometime, you know, by July, August, maybe a little later, but, you know, 3,000. Well, considering that only about 8 per 1,000 people die in the course of a given year, 8.3, I think, depending where you are in the country. Right. That's a big number in a county the size of ours. But that was going to overwhelm the funeral homes. I mean, there's no <laughs> way to deal with it. Sure. And and it was going to overwhelm the hospital. So we're setting up. I I am renting refrigerated trucks and hiding them around the county, hiding them where people can't see them. And there's generators to run them to keep them going when the time comes. I'm ready to store the first 800 bodies. Yeah. And I'm also ready for an additional several hundred uh, overflow hospital rooms all over the county. None of which was ever used, ever. Not one bit of it. None of it. Never needed. Because yep. instead of having 3,000 people die from COVID by August, the, the best number they could come up with in this large county, and I still think that more than half of those numbers at best were fraudulent. I of mean, course. let's face it. The first COVID death was a guy that was a three-pack-a-day smoker, alcoholic, lived in a right. mobile home, had been in, in and out of the VA hospital. Oh, for the last five years, he had been in and out three times in the last nine months before COVID. He was 87 years old and still smoking three packs of cigarettes a day and right. consuming alcohol and barely eating. And he was our first COVID death. Right. <laughs> and and yeah. we're all supposed to be running around in face diapers and walking one way in aisles in a grocery store so we don't die. Right. And was, so it's fear, right? It's the masked and the unmasked, the vaxxed and the unvaxxed. Mm -hmm. Divide and conquer, creating division among the people is, you know, an age old war strategy. Yeah. So if, if you remember, and here's the scary part, you know, during Hitler's reign, <clears throat> anti-Semitism was normalized through propaganda in which the Jews were likened to lice. Yep. And they were accused of carrying, get this, infectious disease. Deadly infectious disease. The very same tactic was used during the COVID pandemic. And everybody bought into it. They look at the unvaxxed as infectiously diseased. And the crazy part about it is that, you know, still, I go to work and I have to wear a mask because I am not vaxxed. I did a religious exemption. I refused it. 
all of those who are quadruple vax now, four, still don't come near me unless I put the mask on. And we know, and and the key is there's not one, and there's not one study in the world, not one, right, that proves that a mask would have any benefit to anybody whatsoever in a million years on reducing the spread of COVID. And not only that, but still, CDC has it all over their site. They're lying, but still, there but is no re- hey, example the- of an isolated COVID-19 virus. I know, and I've been reading that, too, and that is also something to be concerned about. No. Now, I, I've got a funny feeling that um, I'm going to have to have you back on again tomorrow as a guest because we're just beginning to scratch the beginning of this topic. Right. You know, and, and I know that when you and I get started, it's hard to you know wind it up quick. So any last thoughts you want to share today, um, but, and then we'll get back to this again tomorrow. What, what, are the, what are the things that are most important? We, we can sit here and talk about this, and we will again tomorrow kind of show the absurdity. You know, all this nonsense out of China with people just keeling over dying of COVID and the hazmat team pulling the body away, all of this silliness, it was all done and well carefully designed at event 201 in new york city back in october of 2019 you know it and i know it and that was an eye-opener and and here's the thing people need to stop just stop listening right now to the mainstream media and do research yourself look up event 201 look up some of these documents that were that were put out early on by people saying wait a minute this isn't even a vaccine it's it's a gene therapy of some kind mm-hmm. read those documents you don't need a science degree you might have to look up a few words here and there if you're not used to it but you can understand it and they tell you plainly what this is and what they're doing. That is the only way through the education that you're going to be able to notice and discern the lies that are being said on the TV. You have got to do that because light will shine on the darkness. And that light is from God. He will give you absolutely. <laughs> we know. I'm just thinking one more thing. Um, in, in, there's a doctor. I'm not going to say who his name is. It's someone that I know from South Carolina, and he's retired. But when this pandemic started, because of his other background, he knew to start stockpiling certain medications because he was familiar with what had happened in 2003 and 2004 with SARS-CoV-1. And and I discovered this when I was working in emergency management, and this was the greatest eye-opener I'd ever heard. I'm looking at some old stuff, you know, in the archives of the CDC. And you they were still online at the time. And I downloaded some of this just in case it got gone. SARS-CoV-1, or just SARS-CoV, they didn't have two. That's, now you know why there's a two. This is not the first rodeo with this. It killed allegedly 30,000 people worldwide. And in the afterwash, in the big study... They determine there is a course of treatment that is highly effective. And this is from the CDC. Right. And it was hydroxychloroquine and zinc. Yeah. Now. I never heard that you mentioned those, did you? No, but it's funny that the CDC (laughs) discovered it in all their their studies that it was extremely effective. Now, Mm -hmm. so this guy got himself, this is before the term even, you know, it came out. Right. He got a hold of plenty of hydroxychloroquine, which is like pennies a dose. He could get it. Mm -hmm. He treated in South Carolina in his retirement over 800 patients that came down with COVID-19 back when it was a nasty version, not the watered down version. And I'll give you my opinion tomorrow on on the watered down version. Uh, But, you know, one of the things that he, out of the 800 and some odd patients, only one died, and that patient was in his mid-90s. Yep. That was, and I have a friend of mine that came down with a bad case. He said, Bob, he goes, I felt great in 24 hours. I started on the mend. And I was, you know, heading toward Ventilator City. I knew someone else. I know someone else that, uh, same thing. I had another (laughs) friend of mine in Florida. 
uh, being treated at a veteran's hospital. Right. And you have to know the wife. She is tenacious and armed, <laughs> to be quite blunt. <laughs> and she and a battery of lawyers went and removed her husband from the VA hospital with them screaming, you can't do it. And she said, I'll sue you. I'll own your house. I'll own your kids. I'll own your boat. I'll own your retirement. Leave us alone. And they just got scared and walked away. He was right. taken to a monoclonal antibody, antibody site. He's fine now. But he was on. they were going to put him on a ventilator that day. Right. Do you think he'd still be with us if he went on the ventilator? No, many are dying from that. 80 and some odd percent. The hospitals get the incentives to do that, right? Financially. To put people on you got it. I mean, the money aspect is is the problem. It's evil. It's evil. I mean, that's what we got to talk about, the fact that we're looking at evil. I mean, don't take the zinc, but eat crickets, right? This is where we're going now. And, and it's unbelievable that they're going to reduce humanity through all these different ways. But part of it is the food, too. We should talk about that. If the Great Reset necessitates – somebody controlling and completely transforming every single um, distribution line that we have out there, whether it's medicine, food, uh, energy, they're, they're going to control it all. And guess who that might be? I would say the majority of the audience would be capable of figuring out who they are. Now, by the way, we're about out of time for today's program. So Dr. Gales, We'll pick this up on tomorrow's broadcast. There's just not enough time uh, to get it all in today. I want to thank everybody that listens to this radio program and podcast. As I've said so many times, it's your faithfulness that keeps this on the air. Now, I don't, I'll be honest, this has been a very difficult summer. I know the economy is in bad shape. We knew it would be in bad shape. After the fraudulent election of 2020, I, you cannot convince me that all these millions of people came out in spite of the virus to vote. You can't convince me that somebody with hundreds of ballots being dropped in a Zucker box, as they call it, were legitimate ballots. They were illegally harvested. So the election was tainted. I don't care what anybody says. You can. These are the same people, the same people that are saying this was a fair election also were wrong on so many issues about the virus and the lockdowns. It's amazing how the director of the CDC, she, you know, Rochelle Walensky, she's now a hero because, well, she's admitting we didn't really do that well with the pandemic. But if you challenged a word that she said a year ago, year and a half ago, you were spreading disinformation. Whatever she said was the gospel truth, and you better believe it or else. They lied about the fact that the vaccines, remember when Joe Biden said, if you get the vaccine, you won't get COVID. You won't get sick. You won't die. Well, quadruple vaccinated and double mass Biden came down with COVID. The guy that heads up the uh, military department of defense, Lloyd Austin, double masked quadruple vaccinated and wears a Darth Vader type face shield. He has COVID. So they lied. And this week we're going to be exposing the liars. And I'm going to have Dr. Gales back on tomorrow to complete our topic. But as I said, we do need your support to stay on the radio. And if you can help us out, would you make a check payable to Ancient Word Radio? That's Ancient Word Radio. Mailing address, Truth to Ponder, 5753, Highway 85 North. That's 5753, Highway 85 North, number 3248. That's number 3248. The city is Crestview, Crestview, Florida. Crestview, Florida. And the zip code in Crestview, Florida is 32536. That zip code again, 32536. And by the way, you can also support us from our website. This has been Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. To find out more, visit our website, Truth, the number two, and the word ponder.com. That's Truth, the number two, ponder.com. Truth to Ponder, shining the light of truth in a darkening world.